It's the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion. This is for Wednesday, the 26th of June. I'm Michael Groff. Before we get things started today, a very special thank you to Miles Sampson for making a generous donation to this video, to this channel. And when you make that kind of a donation, when you put in that kind of effort, well, we want to give something back and say thank you. So here it is. We thank you, Miles Sampson, for the donation that you made. Because without your help, our bills will go unpaid. Michelle is ever grateful, our cat Freya is as well. Joe passed wagging her tail, but he's asleep, so who can tell? How can we express the gratitude we share? You're a hero and a legend giving hope through despair If others want to help us so our videos won't stop PaypalGrossShow at gmail.com PaypalGrossShow at gmail.com An all-star cast here on the weather video. Thank you again, Miles Sampson, for your donation. All right, the weather around here quieting down over the next few days as somewhat drier air will work its way in here. Now, there still will be some widely scattered showers and thunderstorms over the higher terrain, but it looks relatively unlikely that we're going to see anything here in the lower deserts for a while. But the forecast turns considerably more complicated by the time we get into the weekend and next week. We shall talk about that and everything else as well as we dive on in. First, let's check out that almanac from yesterday. 108 degrees the afternoon high. 60 of 86 was the morning low. 68 would be wishful thinking. 60 is the record low for the date. 120 degrees, that record high. The second or the third hottest uh, ever uh, high temperature here in Phoenix. That's back from 1990. Of course, today marks the anniversary of the hottest day ever recorded in Phoenix, 122 degrees, June 26th, 1990. Fortunately, we won't be anywhere near that. Now, last night, officially at Sky Harbor, a trace of rain. Some of you saw more than that, particularly out in the West Valley, quite a bit of shower and thunderstorm activity. I just don't think we're going to see all that this evening. We'll talk about that in a moment. Outside right now here, just before noon, mostly sunny. 102 degrees. It's still sticky out there. Dew point at 63, humidity 28%, a light wind in the barometer 29.86 inches and falling. Upper level weather pattern across the nation right this moment shows high pressure still in control here over the southwest. We've got a weak little low coming up from the Baja. The flow aloft is gradually beginning to turn more out of the southwest, and that is not favorable for bringing storms out of the high country into the lower deserts. So I just don't see a scenario where we have too much activity here this afternoon or tonight. But that said, mathematically speaking, the chance of rain is not zero. And moisture, while it will be moving away from us somewhat, it shouldn't be shunted off too far from us over the next few days. The reason for this is because we have an area of low pressure, a trough coming in toward the Pacific Northwest, and that's going to displace our ridge, forcing it a little bit further to the south across uh, northern Mexico and southern Arizona, and that'll turn the flow aloft more southwesterly and westerly in coming days. The watch warning map, excessive heat warnings, heat advisories from the southern plains to the Gulf Coast. And of course, if you're in the southeast and you're not in that heat advisory, it doesn't mean it's magically not that hot. It just, uh, th these are National Weather Service criteria for what is and what is not a heat advisory or an excessive heat warning. And then we have the same thing here in the Southwest. Uh, the National Weather Service has specific criteria for issuing an excessive heat warning. Uh, we'll be on the verge of those this weekend, potentially, especially with humidity uh, maybe coming back up by the time we get towards Saturday and especially Sunday. 
Further to the north and west of us over the Great Basin, we've got some red flag warnings. Obviously, it's quite dry up there, and it is expected to remain dry. So wildfire danger is a concern. Convective outlook for today, we've got a couple of standard slight risks over the western high plains, the Lee of the Rockies, as well as the southern plains and into parts of the southeast U.S. The broader severe weather risk really uh, from, again, the central plains through the southeast and all the, also up into the northeast, a standard slight risk from the Ohio Valley all the way to the mid and upper Atlantic coast. We also have a uh, marginal risk of severe storms north of the state up across parts of Idaho, around Boise, Nampa could see some uh, showers and storms producing some strong gusty winds, maybe some hail. Now, in Arizona, part of the state in the green, thunderstorms possible, just not real sure we're going to see anything here in south-central Arizona. Precipitation outlook, this is valid through Wednesday morning of next week. Rain amounts in Phoenix, not much, if anything. Mainly confined to the higher terrain of northern and eastern Arizona, the southern portion of the state along the border. We could see uh, anywhere from one quarter to one half inch in some of those areas. But obviously, as always here in the monsoon season, your amount will vary. Let's get into the details of everything going on right now. To do that, we explore the models, check things out. The GFS, this is the 12Z run, and it's valid at 5 o'clock this afternoon. High pressure beginning to reposition itself. The flow aloft changing more out of the southwest. So what it means down at the surface for the rest of the day today, yeah, it's still going to feel muggy out there and hot. Okay, highs anywhere from 105 to 110. Mostly sunny to partly cloudy sky. We'll see those distant cloud buildups out there. And again, widely scattered showers and thunderstorms over the higher terrain. Now, could there be a storm in the lower deserts tonight? Yes, there could. But will they be as numerous as we've seen the last couple of nights across south central Arizona? No, they will not. Uh, but we can't completely rule it out. That said, we're not putting any meaningful chance in the forecast, anything above 10%. I would say the chance is probably 5% or less that we'll see anything in Phoenix tonight. So you're saying there's a chance. Now, for tonight, again, some place might see an isolated storm. Otherwise, we turn mostly clear overnight lows, low 80s to low 90s. And it is still going to be muggy out there. The surface moisture is going to be stubborn to move out. Now, tomorrow, uh, we'll see mostly sunny sky, a little less humid. High temperatures, 107 to 111. And it's pretty much the same story on Friday. A few showers and storms over the far southeastern portion of the state. Otherwise, most of us should stay relatively dry. High temperatures, again, somewhere between about 107 to 111. Going into the weekend, that trough that I mentioned moving over the Pacific Northwest and, and through the northern tier states, that's going to start to move on out. And high pressure from the southeast and southern plains will start to build back. So we'll see some scattered showers and storms over New Mexico, parts of southeast Arizona, northwest Mexico. And actually, Guidance suggests a rather robust uh, batch of showers and storms will develop across northwest Mexico on Saturday, thanks to an incoming easterly wave down there. And that could be what spurns a big return to moisture and more of a deep layered east southeast flow with time by the time we get to Sunday. But in the meantime, on Saturday, again, high temperatures, a couple of degrees either side of 110 around here. Sunday, look at this. The GFS depicts scattered showers and thunderstorms now across much of central and eastern Arizona. Um, again, mainly in the afternoon and evening hours. If this is right, hey, decent chance we could see some rain on Sunday. But again, uh, you know, the forecast uncertainty starts to grow out here as to how this easterly wave is going to play out, how the expansion of this ridge will be. Uh, we still may have uh, some capping inversion to overcome and some other convective inhibitions. So it's hard to say whether or not we'll have a, a real great day for thunderstorms on Sunday, but we very well could. This is something that's going to have to be watched. And if cloud cover and humidity starts to increase, temperatures should naturally decrease, but the old heat index or the misery index will be with us regardless. So it's still going to feel very hot, even if temperatures do lower a bit. Same story on Monday, widely scattered, Afternoon and evening showers and storms here in the lower deserts. There'll be scattered showers and storms over the higher terrain. High temperatures should, again, fall back a few degrees. Just how much remains to be seen. Tuesday, same thing. Now, obviously, we're going to have to keep an eye on how this pattern progresses because there are a number of different solutions. And again, forecast confidence going out here into next week is somewhat marginal. 
Let me show you why. This is a week from today, Wednesday, the 3rd of July. Got a building ridge off the Pacific Northwest coast. That's interesting. We've got a rather prominent ridge, a pretty strong ridge, anywhere from 594 to 597 decameters over the southeast U.S. Arizona kind of between these areas of high pressure, and there may be kind of a broad deformation zone that exists here. And if that's the case, uh, more of a general monsoonal, maybe a mid-grade kind of monsoon pattern with scattered afternoon and evening showers and storms would be with us. The heights may be a little lower and if that's true, uh, more instability would be realized for better chances of showers and storms. Although, if we're between these areas of uh, high pressure, the steering flow aloft would probably be rather light. So storms that form probably wouldn't propagate very much. They wouldn't move much, which would lend to wherever they do occur, uh, creating opportunities for heavier rain. But let's just stress this. This is... We're out here at a week out now, okay? So things are certainly going to change between now and then. And, of course, we'll watch the tropics to see how that plays out. But you can see the GFS is rather rather aggressive at bringing showers and storms in here in that kind of a pattern. All right, going out 10 days. How about this? This is Friday, the 5th of July. And, uh oof. Rather strong ridge now setting up across northern California and nosing into the Great Basin. Our ridge over the southeast may be suppressed slightly and pushed off to the east. Kind of a we will take this broad ridge and sort of bifurcate it a little bit and put kind of a trough in the middle. So this Pacific Northwest ridge would become the more dominant feature if that's right, and that could start to dry us out. And in this setup. Yeah, temperatures would warm, but note, very strong ridging upstream over eastern Russia and the Bering Sea and a developing, deepening short wave out there in the Northeast Pacific. And what would probably happen in that setup is that would push this ridge over the Pacific Northwest east and southeast and put it over Utah and Colorado eventually, and that would turn the flow aloft easterly. So even if we were to dry out later next week, it probably wouldn't last very long, but let's, again, let's remind you, we're talking out here toward fantasy land. This is uh, eight to 10 days out, so things are going to change. Looking at temperatures, these are off of the, uh, or looking at precipitation, rather. This is, I'm getting ahead of myself. This is off of the GFS Ensemble. This goes all the way out through the 10th of July. And the ensemble mean here, pretty impressive, over three quarters of an inch. The control member is up around an inch and a quarter. Uh, so the GFS has been very insistent that monsoon moisture will be with us and that we'll have opportunities for precipitation over the next couple of weeks, rather early and often. How about that? Now, the European ensemble says, eh, not so fast. It does have some measurable rain here. The ensemble mean, though, is under a quarter of an inch with a number of members in the 51-member ensemble showing absolutely nothing. And that's why we say there is quite a bit of forecast uncertainty. And there, there typically is here in the monsoon season, especially this one with things being as kind of um, out of kilter as they are. Now, let's check out temperatures now we can look at temperatures off the national blend of models and yes you can see early next week it's got us up to or this weekend got us up toward uh, 113 115 we don't want to see that uh, but that's one of those things that could be an inevitability here unfortunately because uh, with high pressure building in and even though the moisture may return we will probably have an opportunity for an excessive heat event here again i know we don't want to see that but that's probably how this is going to go down. Uh, as for precipitation going beyond this period, and I think I had it pulled up, but now I, I don't know. Let me see here. I will check this out. This is the Climate Prediction Center uh, for the period of July 3rd through the 9th. And this is precipitation here. And you can see probabilities are skewed toward above average precipitation here across southern Arizona. In fact, I would say heavily skewed toward above average rainfall in that period, July 3rd through the 9th, the 8 to 14 day period. And um, 
somewhere in the 50 to 60 percent range. So that that says uh, the CPC seems to think that we're going to have rather robust monsoon activity out there. And let's hope so, because still the outlook for the rest of the monsoon is not looking that favorable. But do we ever want those guys to be wrong? Absolutely. The long range outlook, I would I have said myself that I do not believe this will be a very active monsoon season, probably better than last year. But then again, uh, just about anything. I think we've already had better than last year. Um, so, but I just don't see a, a real great monsoon opportunity. I'd love to be wrong. And so far, if we take this at face value, I would be. Nothing makes me happier than being wrong about something like that. That's going to do it for the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion for today. My next video is due back here when? Tomorrow morning. Yes. Updates before that, if necessary. Should you happen to enjoy these videos, be sure to subscribe, like, share, click that notification bell, leave those comments, questions, and suggestions. And if you really like what we do here, then click that uh, thanks icon below the video. Make those monetary contributions there. Or, of course, as the song says, you can donate via PayPal, groffshow at gmail.com, the email address there on PayPal. That is G-R-O-F-F show at gmail.com for PayPal. The executive producer of the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion is my one and only, the sweetest of all time, the Asian sensation and the proprietor, a lot of these, the proprietor of sweetchildaz.com.org and the Facebook page of the same name, Sweet Child Arizona, talking about my Michelle. Check her out, her videos, all of her relevant stuff. It's all linked up down there in the description, as is our streaming station. It's called KMGX. We play a ton of music and have a lot of fun with that, so also give that a listen. All right, I thank you guys so much for watching. All of your continued support, so greatly appreciated. Please, please, please be safe. Stay cool, stay hydrated out there, and you folks have yourselves a terrific rest of your Wednesday.